Hey, before you click off the video, uh, I just want to give an extremely, extremely quick thank you for making my channel reach over 200 subscribers. As of me recording this right now, we are at 206 subscribers, and I just want to say I am absolutely grateful for all of you for subscribing. Thank you so much. Um, I love you all. I am extremely grateful, and yeah. Get ready for the next hour or so of me info dumping about the stupendium. Yippee! When it comes to nerdcore artists, none quite live up to the stupendium. At least for me, that is. They have such a flair to them, a uniqueness, a once in a lifetime artist that I'm glad I discovered when I did. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a classic Welcome Stupendium fan. I only got into them back in December of 2020, and never really knew much about them before then. Obviously, I knew them because of Way Deeper Down, Art of Darkness, the most fashionable faction in Ad Infinitum, but I never really gave them a shot outside of those songs. Somehow, No One's Home found its way into my playlist, but those five songs were the end of my Stupendium expertise up until December of 2022, when I decided to jump into their music and I have been hooked ever Ever since. While JT Music was struggling with Skull's personal demons, DA Games was existing, and every other nerdcore artist fell down the generic anime rap rabbit hole, Stupendium stuck out and glued me, quickly becoming one of, if not my favorite musicians of all time. Each song is different, each song is memorable, and each song scratches a certain itch in my little autistic mind that I never knew needed scratching. At least, most of them are. While most of Stoop's back catalog is amazing, there are certainly some better than others, and dare I say, there are some songs that are just downright not good. So today, I will be ranking them. Every single Stupendium song, all 77 of them, ranked from worst to best. Now there are a few rules for this list I will be taking into consideration. First, any song before the original version of Find the Keys will not be included. Sure, their song covers For and Then I Pray and British Summer Jam may have their fans. However, I wouldn't really say Stoops really became the stupendium until the original Find the Keys. Second, no ciphers will be included, so no Muppet Cypher or Geek Cypher 2. Third, only videos on Stoops' channel will be included, so no features like Afraid of the Dark by Tryhard Ninja or any Freshy Canal Rat Battle. If it's not on the main Stupendium channel, it isn't counted. Finally, these are all my opinions, and trust me, they will change over time. Also, if Stoops drops a song after this has entered the editing phase, it will not be included. So any song past the 2023 remaster of The House Always Wins will not be included on this list. Anyways, let's begin. Number 77. Starting off the list, we have the worst Stupendium song. And going into this, I thought, what could possibly be the worst Stoop song? Was it going to be a song that just mediocre? Was the song going to be one that doesn't hold up well today? Maybe it got a remaster and so there is no point going back to it. What I found instead ended up being a mix of the last two questions. However, the answer was something that is genuinely unlistenable. It was near impossible for me to finish. Halfway through this song, I knew my answer. It's a joy, it's a joy, it's a joy, it's a joy, it's a joy to be among we happy few. It's a Joy is a song that perfectly encapsulates the game it's based off of, We Happy Few. The song is a mess that has decent rhyme schemes and lyrics, and Stoops, to their credit, tried a harmony for one of the first times in their career. However, this song is not mastered well. At all. The vocals are quieter than the instrumental, it's off-key and off-beat. Dan Bull even comes in for a verse, but even he can't save this song. But don't worry, because this song will be getting its due praise much later on. Number 76. So, as of writing, 2023 hasn't been a very song-heavy year for Stoops. Sure, the quality surpasses the quantity any day of the week, however, Stoops typically does two remasters a year to fill in a gap between uploads. So what was the first song of 2023 to get the remaster treatment? Spooky, scary, send him shivers down your spine. You best prepare for a hilariously bad time. You 
may be surprised to find the 2023 remaster of Way Deeper Down, well, this far down. And right off the bat, it sounds better than the original. If you want a bad time, then you're in the right place. Just look into my eyes, see my funny tax face. I'm really. Oh. Oh no. Yeah, so the chorus, the vocals, and pretty much everything else has been massively improved from the original. However, there is one issue. What the hell happened to the instrumental? There's this real loud doo sound throughout it, and it's very distracting and makes the track a downgrade from the original. However, that wouldn't be enough to put it this low, honestly. No, what makes me put it this low is Gaster's verse. The effects added to Gaster's voice, mixed with the previously mentioned instrumental, genuinely started to give me a headache or sensory overload or both. This is one of the first times I've ever had to feel like that listening to a song, and it just wasn't fun. So I have to put this as the second worst stupendium song based off of that alone. Number 75. So as you'll soon learn, and spoilers for my opinions on song later in the list, Stupendium's Christmas songs, with one exception, typically are never my favorites. And this is especially obvious with not just this song, but this song next in the list, as they're part of the Very Scary Christmas Quadrilogy. This isn't typically the sort of Christmas I'd enjoy. I was sat at my computer, then I slid into the void. The Fright Before Christmas is one of the most nothing songs I think the Stupendium has made. It's not bad, but there's just nothing to it. Even Stoop says towards the end of the song that they're out of ideas and didn't want to make this or any other songs like it again. As though they're really popular, it's ever but after doing three of these, I'm all out of ideas. It just feels like a safe, generic song to get some clicks for Christmas, and it shows. It does have a plot reversal of this time Stoops goes into their computer to celebrate Christmas, but it doesn't do much at all, really. Reminder, we're ranking the audio here and not the videos. If we were, this would be much higher up, as their artwork for these is genuinely really good looking and well made. Number 74. Well, I already told you what song this was gonna be. Oh god. We hear sounds of celebration, we hear jingling of the bells. You forgot our invitation, we guess we'll invite ourselves. And to all a good fright is the final song of the Very Scary Christmas Quadrilogy, and it's definitely the most unique. The song is very meta, and as Stoops complaining about how they don't want to make these songs anymore, while the characters all sing about how they won't be able to celebrate Christmas without them. Honestly, the thing holding this song back is that it's way less of a song and more of an extended skit. It's six minutes, and really, once you listen to this once, you have nothing to go back and listen for. A much better YouTube video than a song. Number 73. I can already tell you that my placement of this song is going to get me burned at the stake, or in the theme of the game, steamed on top of the generator. Eat, lads. Oh, lads. Look at the comforts of home, you're a nomad. First of all, I need to say, Shelter from the Storm is not that bad of a song. See, we have now hit the point of the list where most of these songs move out of bad and onto mediocre, or just not my thing. Or hell, even I like the song, just it kept getting moved down in the rankings due to other songs, which is exactly why Shelter from the Storm is so low on this list. It's a really decent song, however, I have no attachment to it as I know nothing about Frost punk, which probably does hurt its ranking a bit. The instrumental is bombastic and epic, the lyrics are well written and emotional. It's a decent song, however one that just kept getting moved down as the list continued on. Number 72. Let me compare this song to PUBG. It's 1 to 100 that anyone even remembers this song to be honest. Damn. It's admirable. You want to battle at Scrabble, but do you offer a challenge, or do you just dabble? For the life of me, I could not remember that the Chairman Rolls Again existed. There is no chorus and it is simply just a playful diss track on Dambol. The raps are well written and really clever, however, besides for the name and the challenge this was made for, there is no connection to board games at all besides just Scrabble, like five times in total. It's not a bad song, but my god, can I never remember this. 
number 71. So, going on with decent sounding but utterly forgettable stupendium songs. It's a whole new world, so be a guest, you gotta go the distance, gotta be the best. A Little Heart, out of almost all of Stoop's more serious emotional songs, has the least amount of message in it. Most of it is just finding faith from friends and sticking with each other. However, this message isn't greatly described because Stoops tries to reference as many Disney songs as possible, which isn't bad. I also see later Milk Milk Lemonade does this fine, however here it actually places the song's detriment. Although I will say the Friends on the Other Side, side reference is rather decent. Love's an open door, and you will find that you've got friends on the other side. Overall, there is nothing to write home about with this song, and as you can tell, most of the songs here are things I have no connection to or no care for. Number 70. So as I said, I'm a very late bloomer when it comes to being a Stupendium fan. So what was the first Stupendium song to release after I became one? It's Christmas! Oh. Well, I mean technically it was Christmas in the Backrooms, but I really didn't become a fan fan until after this. No, I, I mean the first Stupendium only song to be released after I became a fan. I think it would be just be easier if I gave up and told you the song already. If you were on my Twitter when this song was announced, you could tell I was not excited for this song. I hate Genshin Impact. The fan base is majorly really weird. <laughs> Lolly caught. <laughs> And it was an advertisement too. But after listening to it, I can say a summary in Sumeru is uh, all right, I guess. It's just reference after reference with Stoops getting obviously annoyed and tired towards the end, which is more than likely part of the joke. However, a part of me thinks that they just didn't care and wanted their paycheck. It's stressful trying to keep track of this stuff. It takes a toll. Look at me. I'm only 26. Number 69. Breaking up the monotony of, oh, I don't know about slash care for the game, so I think the song is just alright. We have a song about a game I actually really like, however, don't care much about the song. It was hard to wait my home goodbye. Looks like the way to my home tonight. As a kid, I dreamed of space. Now I'm finally awake in the no Waves Like Home is a song with a sweet message, and I believe that once I'm old enough, this song will hit so much harder for me. It's about going out on your own and making the home where the heart is, which is a great message. Not to mention the great chorus and subnautica references make this song good. However, as I'm still living with my parents and in school as I'm writing this, I just can't relate yet. So I can't truly really understand the beauty, like I know what they're going for, I just can't appreciate it yet. Just know if I ever make an updated version of this list in the future, this song will probably be higher if I were to guess. Number 68. I've already put two of Stoop's Christmas theme songs down in a rather bad position on the list. And spoiler, this one is another Christmas song. But I don't mean anything against the songs. Maybe it's because I'm writing this in October, I'm just not in the festive mood yet or what. But for the most part, they're really okay songs that don't have much going for them. You'd better not pout, you'd better not cry. If she is the sound, you'll probably die. You'd I'm gonna be honest. I really love Carol of the Tales. In fact, I moved it up from its original placement of like 73 just because I didn't want it to be so low. However, there are just two issues with this song that are holding it back for me. First of all, Stoops in the chorus sounds like they're doing a quiet yell, where you try and sound like you're yelling without actually doing so, and it kind of sounds a bit wonky. The other issue is the Tattletale voice. They make it a bit hard to hear the lyrics, but props for Stoops trying their best to sound authentic and doing a good job with it. Overall, I really do like this song. However, compared to every song after this, I just can't see it beating them. Number 67. This song is one of the first big hits from the Stupendium that wasn't about an indie horror title. In fact, it was about a game nearly 10 years old upon the song's release. You 
The House Always Wins is a slow, jazzy, anti-democracy anthem with Stoops portraying Mr. House from Fallout New Vegas. The flow, writing, and chorus for this song is all really good, however there is one problem with the song. It's quietness. The vocals are so much quieter compared to the instrumental, which is pretty much just the same thing for five minutes. Also, while this is only present in the YouTube upload of the song, am I the only one who hears the instrumental be weirdly cut and get really louder entering the third verse? I saw the path, I preempted those ascending arms. My gilded heart beats forever on to mend the scar. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Number 66. I feel the music moving through every part of me. I see the beauty blooming out of every passing beat. Impossible Geometry is a short, ultimately silly song about Beat Saber. Chi Chi provides some really great vocals for the chorus, and the speed and flow for the song is actually really fast and impressive. I just have really nothing to say. This one part towards the end is kind of gross but funny though. Also, this song is an official Beat Saber mod chart, which also counts for the music video, which is honestly really cool. Still hoping someday Stoops will drop an audio surf song. Please, Stoops, I know I'm the only one but I need this. Number 65. So this is a song where I love the source material so much that this song has so many issues my brain just can't help but complain. One day from just plump fading away how you gonna build a house with the foundation erased? The West Was One is a Red Dead Redemption 2 song. A song about my favorite game of all time. Oh boy. First of all, Squiggly Dig, who sings the chorus, sings it beautifully, and Stoops raps fast and in a very fake, exaggerated southern US accent, which is extremely impressive and they almost never lose it throughout the song. So what is the issue with the song then? Despite Cos playing as Arthur Morgan, the main protagonist of the game, most of the lyrics portray themes that Dutch, THE Dutch Vanderlyn advocates for and not really anything that Arthur portrays throughout the game. Now a song by Stoops as Dutch Vanderlyn would be badass as hell, and honestly with their mustache I feel like they could pull off the Dutch song better. But as it is, The West Was One is a decent song that has impressive rapping and singing and fake accents, but as a major flaw that any Red Dead fan would agree ruins the song. Number 64. Stupendium has made it no secret that it takes a while for their songs to be made, especially much bigger projects. So oftentimes, by the song's release, the game, while still popular, has went past its peak of relevance, or in the worst case scenario, the game released and had a plethora of controversy around it. And this is not the last time on this list the latter happened. In fact, this song was the first example of it. Do you think that the world can ever be fixed? Is America buried in You could just tell that the Stupendium had a great time making Vault Number 76. It's filled with Fallout references and the video is very well put together and obviously took a long time to make. However, avoiding the obvious modern day perception of Fallout 76, this song is pretty okay. The Barbershop Quartet for the chorus is a nice addition and one of my favorite parts is when Stoops wraps up killing their neighbor because they interrupted their crossword puzzle. However, again, no attachment to the source material and vocals are a bit quiet. Number 63. So, by all accounts, I really shouldn't be counting this song, but what were the rules again? No pre-find the key songs, no ciphers, and no features for other people. So, I say this counts. Would you like to buy my merchandise? It's rather nice in a range of sizes for a decent price. The Stupendium merchandise wrap is exactly what it says on the tin thanks to the tropes. It's Stoops going over their options for merchandise, which sadly is no longer available, and as of writing, Stoops hasn't announced any of its return due to the website hosting the site going down. The song is a short, extremely meta and silly song. No funny wordplay or anything, but a damn good advertisement. And the ending bit is one of my favorite things about the song. 17. No pressure, but it's really nice. I love Stupendium merchandise, and that is my genuine opinion. So come on and buy my merch! Hell, you can bet if I ever make merch, I will make my own merch. Dice wrap. Mark my fucking words. 
Number 62. So going forward, all the songs would go from mediocre to good with one or two flaws. This is where I start praising them a lot, so just be prepared, especially for later. It's another horror holiday. Oh boy, who would have guessed another Stupendium Christmas song? This one, though, is actually pretty good, all things considered. While it still falls down the rabbit hole of reference after reference just to fill up the lyrics, the song's medley and the chorus are all pretty catchy. Hell, even the final chorus for the song features a reference to Carol of the Tales, which I appreciate a lot. In the end, the song is alright and is a rather decent Anta Stoops 2019 songs. Although, I am curious, what was the song before this? Just, just asking. Welcome to space. What were you expecting? Ooh. Maybe that explains why I put this Thank so low. Fantastic. Number 61. Just the five of us. We can make it if we try. But each day that passes by is tearing pages from my mind. Now, I actually really like Why Did I Say Okie Dokie. However, this remix is just alright. I don't know, I don't find this remix anything special, just the original song except it's way more serious, which kind of takes out the charm of the original. The fact that it was supposed to mimic the game so perfectly was part of the appeal of the original, so it trying to go for this more serious route just doesn't work for me. Still, it doesn't sound terrible, I guess? Number 60. This is a song where I feel like I have to specify I am ranking these based on the audio, not the video. Because again, this one would rank rather highly otherwise. You've been away for oh so long, no game to play when you were gone, but now you're here where you belong and we are back together. Back Together tries to be unique, which I will give it credit for. Having four people rapping at the same time to simulate the voices for Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy was a good idea. However, the singing song parts, and especially the chorus, just fall flat for me. So why do I keep it so high if I just keep complaining about it? Simple. Glitch Trap. Stoops rapping as Glitch Trap is genuinely amazing, and for the short few verses they get to rap on, it is just such an amazing tone shift and so clever and well written, I just can't help but to put it here for that alone. Number 59. Run, but I told you so. Comes a call and the darkness descends as the end of it all's where the party begins. We Told You So is the song with the most amount of guest features on it outside of any cipher. It's about the game Back for Blood, the spiritual successor to Left for Dead, and it's a pretty decent song. It features Dan Bull, Shwabadi, Connor Quest, and Rustage, and it is overall a rather decent song. It's about a group of survivors in the zombie apocalypse gloating about how they were right all along and everyone else is just crazy. The only thing holding this song back is the weird voice during the chorus, but other than that, this is a fun jam, and for a song that was apparently made on very short notice, it's an amazing time. Number 58. It's Christmas in the back rooms. May not be the one you planned. But don't you know it is the season to be glitching through the ceiling to a one-tone wonderland? Wow, another Christmas song. Who would have guessed? Christmas in the Back Rooms is a parody of classic Christmas songs, specifically Have a Holly Jolly Christmas, as that is the main tune the song uses throughout. It's a short, ominous, jazzy, and eerie tune for a Christmas song, but honestly, I feel like out of most of their Christmas songs, this is the most tacky one. Which isn't a bad thing, it's just I really can't see myself listening to these outside of 25 days of one month of a year. Plus, I'm making this video before it's even winter yet, so that is more than likely the thing holding back all these songs, honestly. Number 57. Coin hospitals, the only place to be. But we're required to say there's other options legally. Doctor Doctor is a very interesting song. It also features Rustage and is about Two Point Hospital. They rap about all the issues with throwing a hospital, maintaining it, and Rustage and them go through the symptoms of wacky diseases made up from the game. The instrumental fits the game perfectly. The chorus makes fun of private healthcare and one of Rustage's last lines about how the hospital has a monopoly over all the other hospitals, even if it isn't a good hospital to begin with. Overall, the song is wacky, silly, goofy, fun time, and is one I definitely recommend you check out. Number 56. Despite how many indie horror game songs the Stupendium makes, you'd be surprised to know they've only made three ones based off of Five Nights at Freddy's. Those being Back Together, as I mentioned before, A Pizza the Action, which I will talk about later, and their first ever FNAF song, 
Fazbear family. Welcome to the Fazbear family. We family fun with some tragedy. You've sucked your savings down secret teeth into a juicy slice of a lobotomy. Based off of Pizzeria Simulator, Fazbear Family is a big song based off of all of the individual elements of the game and has some of Stoop's best character work. From the first, third, and end of the fourth verse being from the Fazbear Inter Entertainment representative's point of view, the second verse being from Henry and Michael's point of view, and my favorite part of the song, the third verse. The third verse is rapped by Molten Freddy, Scrap Trap, and sung by Scrap Baby, and is honestly really good. The only thing holding back the song so low is the chorus not being the best to listen to, and the vocals for the Fazbear representative being rather quiet. If this song got a remaster though, I bet it would score extremely high on the list. Number 55. Well, we finally made it. The best song of the Very Scary Christmas Quadrilogy. Someone call Tim Burton, cause it's really quite the scene. Yeah, I thought that this was Christmas, but it feels like Halloween. A Very Scary Christmas, the first song in the series, is the best one. Stoop does a great job setting up the story for this one, it has actually a rather small amount of characters in the song compared to the others, being less about references and more about just simply telling the story while being a good song. The instrumental and chorus are my, are my favorite of the series of the songs, although in terms of chorus, it does have high contention with another horror holiday. The artwork is good as usual, and yeah, you can tell out of the four of the songs, this is one Stoops actually cared about the most, at least to me. Number 54. There is a very short, small, specific frame of time in Stupendium's career where they did a bunch of rap challenges given out by nerdcore artists. We've already seen the damn bull scrabble diss track on the list, but where was the original? Where was the original chairman of the board song? Roll up, I put down your controller. Forget the cut, the tabletop is what the cause of. Chairman of the Board is a nerdy song about Stoop's love for board games. Over the course of their verses, they rap about Monopoly, Clue, or as they call it because they're British, Cluedo, and Scrabble. The chorus is relatively catchy, their outfit is snazzy, and their wordplay in, in the Scrabble section is really impressive and amazingly rapped. I don't have much else to say, this is just a well put together song about Stoop's and their love for board games. Number 53. This is the law of the jungle, as old and as true as the sky. The forest protected shall prosper, the forest neglected shall die. You gotta build a zoo is what the title sounds like. A plan is a zoo song encouraging people to save the environment and set up zoos and take care of animals and such. I personally think it's a great message, and the song portrays it wonderfully, and the video is a treat too, getting to see Stoops play with animals and having the time with their life. However, while the song itself is pretty decent, not very memorable outside of the message, but it does a great job getting the message across. Number 52. So, we've made it. The first song in this list according to the rules I set in place. Come on kids, gather round, it's time to meet the marvel of light and sound. He's here for fun, so don't you frown, he'll be right here. When the reels are wild. Find the Keys was Stupendium's first big hit, absolutely blowing up due to its apparent 17 month long production, although most of this is on the video. Being a Bindi song with a fresh style, fresh face, and at the peak of Bindi and the Ink Machine's fandom, all contributed to Stoop's near meteoric rising, going from a few hundred subscribers to over 10,000 upon the song's release. This was also going to be Stoop's last ever YouTube video as well, so if this song never did well, this list and video would never have ever existed. Now, the song itself is alright. Most of the issue comes from the mastering, but I'll let it have an excuse here, as the song's melody, rhymes, flow, and overall creativity is still really solid even to this day. Number 51. Hey, do me a favor. Remember the song I talked about six songs ago? You know, number 57? Well, yeah, take that and make it about schools and also no rustage. A notice to all musicality students. Professor Stupendium's lecture on awkward white middle class hip hop and its use as a promotional tool will be starting in the lecture hall shortly. Thank you. Can't Teach This is a direct sequel to Dr. Doctor, and no, I'm not saying that because it's about Two Point Campus instead of Two Point Hospital. This song uses the exact same instrumental, and Stoops even calls it a sequel song in the description of the video. But other than that, this song is fairly unique, covering all the different things that Two Point Campus teaches, with some of my favorite lines being, rest assured our wizard school is big on inclusivity, and the whole roll call section. Llewellyn Mayhew, Matt O'Grady, Baudelaire, Fipping, Tim Matt, our wither spoon. He's better than a huge fat of gravy, but they are fishing him back out with a spoon. The fourth. 
I'm folk. Uh, I'm just going to put apps. This song is a wacky fun time, and while it's not a showstopper, it's still just a fun little project to enjoy. Number 50. So, one of my big music hyperfixations before getting into the stupendium was rap battles, as if it isn't obvious by my own masterpieces, but one of the things pushing me into trying out more of Stoop's music was the fact that they feature on a bunch of rap battles for Freshy Canal, and even a really underrated rap battle for Eddie FRB where they played the Goose from Entitled Goose Game, more on that later. So, where am I going with this? Got two rappers with the battles excited, boxes in the ring, take a swing at the prize, it's apparently imperative, we get it decided, which brick brick gets kids excited. Minecraft vs. Lego is a rap battle between Dan Bull as Minecraft Steve and Stupendium as a Lego man, and they insult each other. I don't really have anything else to say besides for the fact that fucking Nice Peter and Epic Lloyd of epic rap battles of history sing the chorus and rap as Lego Minecraft Steve respectively. I mean, it's a rap battle. What else do you want me to say? As for who won, well, I'll let you decide! Sorry, my inner rap battle announcer came out. Number 49. It's cold and it's dark. Keeping hold of a spot They sealed us away They were keeping us safe But as years creep to age There's a hole in the eye Open the Sky is a deep, emotional song to listen to. It was written after Stoops wasn't allowed to attend NPC Nerdcore Party Con in 2022 due to catching COVID a day before their flight out. It's about the game Stray, specifically the robots that you encounter throughout the world. However, this song is really just a big emotional dump about asking for guidance during a time of uncertainty and depression. I do not want to say anymore. I highly recommend you go listen to this song by yourself. It is a truly dark song under the surface. Number 48. In the complete opposite mood, if you thought Dr. Doctor was too tame, then I think this is the song for you. Losing My Patience, featuring Bone Cage, is a wacky, silly, brutal, Weird Al Yankovic-inspired rock jam based around Surgeon Simulator 2. Actually saying Weird Al inspired and Stoops saying they channeled him internally while writing the song makes me realize maybe the reason I like Stoops so much is because growing up one of my first ever big music hyperfixations was Weird Al. You know, that explains a lot, actually. So, so besides for this song making me realize that Al single-handedly set off a domino effect sending me directly to this point in my life, I really like losing my patience. For like, for a song that still to this day is under 600,000 views, it is definitely the antithesis of underrated. I know I'm probably gonna end up recommending 80% of Stupendium's discography in this video, but please, Put this in your top five of songs to listen to. It is peak silly stupendium. Number 47. So, stupendium has covered a wide range of topics, from emotional, serious self-discovery songs to ones that are silly and just about games, and the most famous genre, the evil businessman songs. But one topic they don't cover much at all is romance, and one of the first times they cover it is in an interesting way to say the least. <laughs> It's more than I can bear when you're not there, it tears me apart. I swear I'll rip and tear my way to your heart. Rip and tear my way to your heart is a Doom Eternal inspired love song. A love song about how much the Doom Slayer loves to murder the demons. This song uses lots of clever wordplay to make it go from sounding romantic to sinister within seconds, and for a song about an entry in the Doom series, having no metal involved is honestly a unique and decent sounding move. The melody also sounds amazing too, which just goes to show how decent Stoop's singing voice is. Number 46. Stoops isn't any stranger to rap battles, as I've mentioned before, and in fact, Minecraft vs. Lego is actually their second ever rap battle. But what was the first?
A Purpose for New London is a frostpunk rap battle between Stupendium, representing the faith line you can follow in the game and later on theocracy, and Dan Bull, representing order and later on fascism. Both sides make compelling arguments, well, as compelling as theocracy and fascism could be, but in the storyline of frostpunk, both of them make decent arguments, although in my opinion, I think Dan won this battle. After a while, most of Stoops' lines sound more like a crazy cultist, but hey, going forward with that would turn this into a lecture on my views on religion, so I'm just not going to do that. Also, the version of the song I'm ranking here is the full version with both endings. Depending on which channel you watch the video on, it would change who got the last verse, but thankfully on the album version, you can choose either a specific ending or a version of the song with both, which is what I'm ranking. Number 45. When it comes to Bendy and the Ink Machine, we've already talked about Find the Keys, the song that kickstarted Stroop's entire career. Later on in the list, we'll talk about Art of Darkness, a song which, as of recording, is still Stoop's third most popular song of all time, behind the fine print and Why Did I Say Okie Doki, in second and first, respectively. But what is not as well known is their Bendy song right after Find the Keys and before Art of Darkness. This is sells no more. Sharpen your pencil, seal the room. You think I'm mental, I think you're doomed. Experimental death cartoons have crossed the mantle, you're maroon. Sells No More is a song about Alice Angel, specifically chapter 3 as a whole, as that was the most recent chapter of the time. The video for this one is actually one of the most simple ones Stoops has ever made. However, that doesn't mean the song isn't any good. I personally enjoy the instrumental more than the one in Find the Keys, and while Find the Keys is more all over the place, Sells No More succeeds at being a linear song. No one part of the song sounds different than the others, so in terms of a more traditional song, Sells No More succeeds. Overall, I really enjoy the song a lot, and for a very early Stupendium song, the mastering is actually decent and still holds up to this day. Number 44. Pictures of Spider-Man is another stupenda classic, as they call them, that is largely overlooked. Based on the Spider-Man PS4 game, the song is from the perspective of J. Jonah Jameson, going over why he dislikes Spider-Man and making some... Well, not good points, but some points that aren't inherently bullshit, I guess you could say. It also features Rustage again, Gamble again, and oh hey, it's JT Music also! In case you don't know, Skull and Pat were the first people to get me into Nerdcore with their FNAF raps and Minecraft mob raps, so it's cool that my ghosts of Nerdcore past and present are on the same song together. My only complaint with this song is that I think the chorus sounds a bit wonky, but other than that, this is a perfectly serviceable Supendium song, and one that I think goes fairly overlooked. Plus, they nailed the J. Jonah Jameson impression. Number 43. So, this song is going to be hard to describe because number 43 and number 42 are the same song, basically. Sure, number 42 is the remaster, however, to me, they basically are the exact same, minus one thing, which makes there be a slight difference between the ranking of the versions. No The second is a Hitman 2 song. It's an ominous and creepy tune, focused more on watching out and feels like it's trying to set up paranoia about Agent 47, who could be lurking anywhere. Honestly, the song has a case where poor mastering makes it sound better? Like, the chorus is sung out of tune, but it honestly sounds better to me. Like, it makes it sound more ominous and haunting. But as you'll we'll see in a few seconds, there's a reason I put it below the remaster. Number 42. So, the second's 2021 remaster. Why is it the exact same despite the fact I put it higher than the original? Okay, so I think the remastered chorus loses a lot of its touch and sounds just alright when put back into tune. However, Ooh Oxygen's work on the instrumental is what puts this above the original for me. Instead of awkward pauses between the last breath and ain't it tragic how a man can accidentally drown lines, they added in gasping and the sounds of someone being submerged in water, and it just sounds amazing. Honestly, I think it's a fair trade in losing the chorus to the amazingly edited instrumental. However, both versions are interchangeable for me. 
which is why I keep them together. Number 41. Oh boy, another remaster. I bet you guys are tired of hearing me say remaster. Well, don't worry. I'm just going to remaster my review on Shelter from the Storm with the Shelter from the Storm 2022 remaster review. Remaster. Leave lads, oh lads, forget the comforts of home, you're a nomad. We've lost so much since we first started, are a hot cold or a week old hearted. So, as I said, the original Shelter from the Storm was an alright song that kept getting bumped down the list due to other songs being better than it. Well, the main reason why it still wasn't higher up was because of this remaster. This remaster fixes everything wrong with the song, and leaves you with zero reason to go back and listen to the original. The chorus is cleaned up, the instrumental is cleaned up too. Everything here is just perfect. Number 40. Melt, melt, laminate around the corner, say them way. Suck it up, you get to pay. Don't forget the deal you made. Milk, milk, lemonade is a little heart done right, except without a really inspiring message. The song is full of over 100 beverage puns from the easy, such as Pepsi being Pepsi, Whiskey being Risky, and the last line of the song being, I'm knocking demons from A to Z, but I mostly just do H2O, and if you don't get that reference, I have no hope for you. But, there are a lot more harder to get puns in here that make it a fun, jazzy time. Plus, for the only time in this list, Stupendium themselves says a curse word. Yeah, if you don't know by now, Stoops is a completely PG artist besides their innuendos here and there. So, for them to say the word ass is actually kind of shocking. Although, technically, they say it again later on, but the lyrics imply that they said arse. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Number 39. The fact will commence in three... Two, one, facts. A Matter of Facts is another chorusless challenge based song. However, out of the four challenges they did, being this, the board game challenge for chairman of the board, the Damble Scrabble challenge for the chairman rolls again, and finally the Fallout Faction challenge for the house always wins, this one is my favorite. It's not much to talk about, but it's Duke rapping about fun facts for three minutes straight, and it's pretty fun as someone who enjoys this random stuff. Some of my favorites include the Ethiopian Emperor Electric Chair part, the ending to the Super Cow of fragilistic out expolicious alidocious bit i said that horribly wrong and overall just this, the entire song is a decent little time number 38 out of all the stoop songs they sometimes cover not so popular games or games really late on into their lifespan and out of all of them this has to be their most unexpected and absurd a song that was forgettable before i listened to it but it was unforgettable after you listened to it some dolls are a charming town From the farm an alarming sound I've been charged with a charging round Now I'm in charge of my body down Wake Me Up Before You Goat Goat is an insane, boastful, short and dumb rap song about Goat Simulator. And if the song wasn't absurd enough already with this insanely hyped up instrumental and quick rhymes, the chorus is this epically sung tune from the perspective of a cult and then later on a group of scientists as they discover that the goat is the sole thing needed to save the universe from utter destruction. It is is a lot to say the least. Number 37. Whenever your life is strange and the pain is too much to go through, know that you can find your haven in those you chose to be close to. Shine Through is another song that I initially dismissed, thinking it was just another emotional stupendium song and that I wasn't missing anything from not listening to it. But this song is one of the most inspirational and beautiful songs I've listened to. While it's not the best song, and honestly the medley is generic and the singing is okay, its message is one of the best ones Stoops has told. It's okay to not have control over your emotions. It's okay if they don't fit into a described box. Your family isn't just blood, they're the friends whom you are close to. All these messages are just things that hit really close to home for me. But while I had goosebumps listening to the song, what really almost kind of broke me was Stupendium's ending monologue. Nothing lasts, everything fades, and every day you are picking a pigment to place on the canvas life paints, so why choose grey? In the gallery of your time, you cannot always choose the pictures, but you can choose how they are depicted, and they will always be hung in your frame of mind. So smile, but it's okay to be sad. Blue is in the rainbow for a reason, and it has some of the shortest wavelengths. Because there's never enough time to say goodbye. Every one song ends, but how we crescendo is not as important as all of the harmonies we left in our friends. You don't get to go back. You just get to look. 
So make sure that the pictures you took are as colorful as they can be. Yeah, as someone who doesn't deal well with loss at all, whether it be people I know or not, this was both inspiring and also tear-inducing. So, thank you, Stupendium. Number 36. So, another emotional stupendium song. While the message here isn't as heartbreaking as the one in Shine Through, the reason this song is higher is because I find it to still be a message I relate to in a better sounding song. Fragments featuring Freest is an amazing song about Ratchet and Clank. The song is about being thrown out on your own and having to understand that nothing can stay stable forever and that everything eventually, well, fragments. This is such a great song, a well-produced one, a greatly rapped one, and one that covers a subject I relate to a lot, being gender. Don't believe me? Stoop said this themselves when, as I was writing this, the song hit 1 million views. Okay, gonna do my best stupendium impression here. This one is a deeply personal track for me, to the point I still get emotional when I revisit it. It's about self-love, acceptance, and forging a path in the face of change, be that in yourself or in your life. The not-so-subtle subtext is gender, a journey I was starting at the time and still find myself on today. Got a little Scottish there for a second, but that's okay. Number 35. Well, from here on out, pretty much every song is flawless to me and has nothing but praise and admiration. So let's start off the remaining 35 by fixing some hot takes I had earlier on the list. The original Way Deeper Down is just a really great song. There aren't any mastering issues, in fact there are more effects here which I think works to the song's strength. Stoops does great not just impersonating Sans Papyrus' voices, but also writing them close to how they'd actually be written, specifically Papyrus, as Sans is a little too on the nose here about his powers, which he doesn't even remember reset so stop spreading misinformation. Gaster is also pretty fun, and for a song with a lot of words, it's all wrapped quickly and well. Sans is filled with pun, Papyrus keeps getting distracted and mentioning pasta, and Gaster is creepy and cryptic. Overall, for being one of Stupendium's first five songs, and for being his second ever big hit, this song not only holds up well today, but still surpasses the remaster to this day. Number 34. So, we're back to sad person hours with my opinion of the second best emotional Stupendium song. Although I guess that could be an asterisk for being emotional or not, but it made me emotional, so whatever. This song is the second best emotional song. So carry on, little rover, opportunity awaits. Though your song may be over, may your music never fade. Little Rover may not have a severely dark message. It's not about being inspiring during dark times. It's not about saying goodbye. It is simply telling a story. A real story. On July 7th, 2003, three years before I was even born, the first ever Mars rover, Opportunity, was sent into space. It was planned to only be there for 90 souls, or about 92 and a half days on Earth. However, it ended up exceeding that and staying around longer on Mars, continuing its mission for over 5,000 souls, 57 times its original mission length. Throughout its journey, it would post its discoveries online and would gain a following because even if it was just a little rover for people, even if it was just a little rover, for people interested in space, science, robotics, or all of the above, the personality it used and the groundbreaking discoveries it made quickly made it gain a fame base. That was until 2018, when after a severe dust storm where it was supposed to hibernate until it was safe to return, opportunity stopped responding. Over 1,000 missed signal responses later, and on February 19th, 2019, NASA announced the Opportunity's mission was complete. To most, this was just a robot on Mars, but to many others, this was like losing a friend or an idol. Multiple people made tributes to him, which is where Stupendium's song comes in. The song is a retelling about the rover, using a fictionalized version of the rover and Mars as friends and exploring. Honestly, to me, it's not about the message for the song. It's just about the song. 
It is beautifully sung. The lyrics aren't deep and tell the story of opportunity. The song is a slow-paced, goosebump-inducing song. And from someone who knows nothing about the rover and had no care about it before the song, the fact that Stoops was able to make me care, but make me start to feel like how everyone else did, just goes to show how powerful this song is. Number 33. Just a pencil and a drink of cheap death itself. Now that is a beautiful and positively silly thought. Paris meets Jamaica, I'll tell you later. It's either scene has us careening down an elevator. Must have been dreaming to think we'd make a clean escape. I doubt the one machine here could make it past a regulator. Art of Darkness, what could be best described as the Frankenstein of Find the Keys and Sells No More, is the first song of Stoops to be mastered by Oxygen. And while there wouldn't be a mainstay just yet, this is where the quality of the music began to take a massive spike upwards. This song basically compiles everything from chapter 3 to chapter 5 of Bendy and the Ink Machine and puts it into one big song, being the finale to their Bendy song trilogy of sorts. Art of Darkness actually is a lot like Find the Keys, honestly, just instead focusing on what Sells No More covers, which is probably why so many people skip that song. I know I said I'd be praising all the songs from here on out, but I will just say that the song just seems to end. Like when the last line is said, it doesn't feel like it, almost like most of my reviews on this list, kind of. Number 32. Going back to another remaster, which renders the original basically pointless. You can hit them, you can fold them, stack the deck and wait the dice. All that glitters isn't golden, you cash that check, you'll pay the the most recent song released as of recording, the 2023 remaster of The House Always Wins, fixes all the issues I had with the original. The instrumental isn't as repetitive, the vocals are loud but not randomly deafening, and there is a bunch of small talk in the background during the chorus which makes it sound like a casino, keeping in the theme of the song. In fact, this was the version of the song that I covered when I sang my cover of it. Anyways, self plug aside, I really like this remaster as it fixes my, all my issues with the original. And like I said, leaves you with no real reason to go back to that version. Number 31. Ah, it seems we have that one song on the list. You know, when a game is so big that it seems every artist under the song has a song for it. Well, here it is. Just another day of duties on the shell. Slightly spooked by all the crew that we've expelled out of the airlock. Thinking that we're Sherlock, trying to ensure whatever is a border sent to hell. An imposter calls is a song about Among oh, Us. Sorry, I don't know what, what took over me. A song about Among Us featuring Dan Bull. All the rhymes in the song are clever and well made. The flow is impressive and is able to be sung while not ruining it. And the instrumental is well made. The chorus is catchy and groovy and hey, they even do the alternate ending thing for each channel. Sadly, no option for vote because depending on which channel you choose is who you vote out in the end, with Stoops being the imposter all along. However, it is left ambiguous if Dan was also an imposter. So, because we're ranking videos on the Stupendium's channel, we're ranking the ending where they got voted out into space. Number 30. Oftentimes, when Stupendium does a song about an evil businessman, sure they may be bad, but they are never upfront about how they know what they're doing is evil and immoral. This song is another level of evil, because this evil businessman fully knows what he is doing and is rubbing it in your face. They say of the fable that businessman croon, that dog Dog, but he pays the raccoon. Nook, Lion, and Sinker was the first song in Stu Pinion's Animal Crossing song trilogy, and what a way to start. Taking the running gag within the community of Tom Nook being an evil capitalist landlord and jacking it up to 11, this song is pure evil. Nook being able to say that he purposely sets up these towns because people will fall into the scams, victim blaming you for the issues by changing the subject when presented with his own immorality, and even racism by claiming claiming that he only makes a human the mayor so he can use them as a scapegoat should shit hit the fan. Hell, his worst crime? Being from Yorkshire. An absolutely despicable person. A snazzy tune and a sinister song makes Nook, Line, and Sinker the perfect way to start our top 30. Number 29. Come on kids, gather round. It's time to be the marvel of light and sound. He's here for fun, so don't you frown. He'll be right here when the reels are wound. So this one is probably going to be incredibly short. The 2022 remaster of Find the Keys is great. 
basically just take all I said about Art of Darkness and its mastering and apply it to find the keys. I mean, I kinda had to say the same thing three times, so I don't know what else you want me to say. Take all the praise I said back at number 52 and control C, control V. Number 28. Who's this? The true prince of new sense. Cruise in. What you going to need a new fence? Abusing the humans of my amusement since I hatched and every afternoon since. What a Foul Day is a song about Untitled Goose Games. This, this song is all about being a mischievous little shit. Stupendium swaps perspective in the song, when the town so who are annoyed by the goose's annoyances and would want him to, would want to kill him had it not been for the RSPCA existing, and then the goose, who defends all his actions as trying to spice up people's lives, all the while destroying expensive things, stealing kids' glasses, and stealing farmers' food just to throw it away in the lake. The instrumental sounds like a classic hip-hop beat, and despite the fact this is one of the last songs mastered by Stoops themselves before going permanently with the producer in mid-2020 onwards, this mix still sounds pretty amazing to this day. For a short, goofy, goosey song, this is definitely a great one. Number 27. If you feel like I snubbed the second and its remaster earlier in the list, then don't worry. This should take care of those hot takes. The Apex is a Hitman 3 rap song, and while the second is a slower, more ominous tune, this song is more action-packed and more threatening. Like the second was the warning, the Apex is the threat. An intense beat incorporating metal and rock with classic spy movie-esque tunes, quick and brutal lines, some great rapping by Nimraps as a target of 47, and as the finale to Stoops' Hitman-based songs, what a way to end them off on. Number 26. So, I said this one was the best emotional song by the Stupendium. However, I also said this one should have an asterisk next to the word emotional, because the song, most of the time, isn't emotional. However, the song is, again, so beautiful, I need to put it this high. So grab your favorite beverage, raise it up. I know that Christmas is a christened in by lights on a truck. It's a time of year to hold near the ones that you love, so I hope it's more than Coke, you get a toast of that cup. Lights on a Truck, the 2020 version, is an amazing song. It's the best Stupendium Christmas song and my god is it perfect. This song covers everything with the Christmas season, specifically everything went wrong with how humanity partakes in it, from not wanting Christmas to be every day, to us trying to find pleasure in material things to avoid from the world we live in, to understanding that hey, the years go by and we only have so many Christmases to live through, and the main message being spending time with friends and family. Christmas isn't a season when the retailers want you to buy everything. It's a season to spend with people close to you, while cherishing a thought to those not grateful enough to have even that. It's a touching, charming, underrated, and amazingly sung rap song that really kind of gets across the meaning of Christmas. I'm 100% certain that everyone listening to this has heard of the message that Christmas is about family, not the presents. But this song gets that message across perfectly. It throws it directly in your face what its message is, and Stoops doesn't hold back. Plus, the song gets props for being a song for charity to help by homelessness in the UK, which is just the cherry on top. Number 25. I try my best to keep my opinions on the source material out of this ranking, however I must admit more than likely that has influenced this list. Even if my favorite game Red Dead Redemption 2 ended up having its song placed at 65. But as this is a song specifically about each of the characters in the game boasting themselves up while also being my most played Steam game with almost 600 hours as of recording, yeah I feel like this song has to place highly for me. If you're seeing red or you're feeling blue, if you wanna bust caps and wear them too, if you like warfare, stylish headwear, well have we got the game for you. The most fashionable faction is an amazingly written Team Fortress 2 song. A song all about the TF2 mercs, and if I said the Sands for Pyrus were well written and way deeper down, then the mercs are portrayed near perfectly here. Not to mention that Stoops can almost perfectly imitate all of their voices, besides the Soldier and Heavy, who they have Harry 101 come in and rap for. All the references are well written, and for one of the very first Stupendium songs I ever heard, this is a great introduction to their channel, and I'm shocked it didn't try and stick around for more songs. Number 24. You know, now, for a song that exists as an advertisement and for one so blatant, you'd think that would hold back the song. But nope, it actually works more than it should. Welcome to the awesome shop. The planets and the stars and new frontiers of revenue. What a wonderful world is a song about satisfaction. 
Specifically, the collaboration did have in-game items be officially replicated in real life, with Stoops making the song as part of the advertisement for it. While the instrumental isn't as good as their first Satisfactory song, the chorus is catchy, the rhymes are still good, and much like in Nook, Lion, and Sinker, they're still upfront brutal about everything. This song is just one that is heavily overlooked, even if I think it isn't as good as their first Satisfactory rap. Number 23. This song is one that I placed highly originally due to its extremely early release in Stupendium's history, and over the course of the list, it just never got moved down until the very last two songs on the list. I need to call my mom, but I've got no hall pass, so much I'm hiding from a boating psychopath. The aftermath has no right to be as good as it is, especially for such an earlier stoop song. It's a little like way deeper down, focusing on storytelling and character writing, well, as much as character writing as could be done for Baldi's basics, and lots of puns. Stoop's Baldi voice is really good, the instrumental is chaotic and very fitting for the song, plus some of the references in the song are really goofy. And if even that pan can't manage haphazard mathematic madness, my man does a glass when you me down, forget bored now, this is a battle royale. Something that I think is funny, and even if it is a mistake, I like to think that it was intentional due to how it makes the song feel much more like a Baldi song with it. The mistake in question is how in all of the second verse and most of verse 3, Stoops has no kid-like accent and is rapping in their normal voice, whereas everywhere else they are doing a kid voice. I don't know, something quirky I really like about the song. Number 22. This song is another I feel like will be a hot take, even if it is still in the top 25. You got a daily that needs assistance, expertise and season wisdom. Who wants to learn, take a seat, and this song is worth the word of the ecosystem. These Hallowed Wings is just a good feeling song. It's a song about the preservation, natural history, arts, and even insects which Blathers hates. Oh yeah, this is another one of Stupendium's Animal Crossing songs. Being about Blathers, a character who is the museum owner in the game, this could have been a more boring song song. With the amazing instrumental, greatly sung vocals, and multiple jokes throughout, it keeps the song an enjoyable and entertaining time. You can never feel bad listening to this song, which is why it's 22, but don't think it's a bad thing. All of the songs from here on out are flawless masterpieces, real 10 out of 10 from here on out, ladies and gentlemen, and creatures in between. Number 21. There are branches everywhere. And it's safe? Yes, sir. Deep down, down between the trees, nestled in the leaves, gleams a TV screen. Mm. Near a small lad sitting in the tall grass. Mm. It's an odd transmission to be broadcast. Tune Into the Madness is one of the most advent guard, confusing, disorienting songs I have ever listened to. In fact, the first time I listened to it, I didn't like it and found it just confusing. But once I actually understood the message of the song and the games attached to Little Nightmares 2, I quickly loved this song. No, song isn't the right word. Experiences. For over five minutes, Stupendium and Damble near schizophrenically rap about the dangers of TV and advertising, from having commercials play in between the verses, to constantly swapping characters and pitches and rhyme schemes and references, and if I tried to explain this song, it just wouldn't give it justice. Tune into The Madness, which is actually a sequel to Damble's Dive Into The Madness for the first Little Nightmares game, is a song that makes no sense, can barely be considered a song, but carries so such a strong message about television and their near parasitical control it has over society in advertising and enforcing gender norms. It is just such a song, it can barely be called one. It is an experience through and through. Number 20. Well, we made it. The top 20 best stupendium songs. And I just want to quickly address the obvious about this list. I am aware of the limits of my own writing. I understand that I struggle at writing my own emotions, and I often write it under one biased perspective and never a neutral. And my neutral tone is always short and either I could care less or it's just okay. I struggle with writing my feelings, especially when they change on a second to second basis, it seems. So anyways, all this to say, form your own opinions and understand I am a wee bit stupid sometimes. There's a cozy little place tucked away between the third and fourth circle of hell Where you can take a break, make a great vacation Maybe taking just a little damnation as well So ring the bell Don't Let the Bell Hops Bite is a song that on the surface just seems to be another stupendium song about an indie horror game. It has decent flow and pawns, but it doesn't have any real impressive rapping. The chorus is catchy, but it doesn't have any super deep message, and in the end, it wasn't even accurate by the song's release, because by the time it came out, the developers disproved the theory that Dark Deception takes place in the circles of hell. However, despite all this, the song is still really good. The aforementioned chorus is really good and catchy, the instrumental is one of Stupendium's best, and the song overall just holds a charm of being a bad song. It doesn't try to be anything more than what it says on the 10, and not every song needs to. Sometimes having a song irreparably attached to the source material is just as good as one not, and for that, Don't Let the Bellhops Bite is a perfect song to begin our top 20 with. 
number 19. A Matter of Factories is what a plunderful world done right. Or because this song was first, technically that song was A Matter of Factories done wrong, even if it is still really good. Anyways, A Matter of Factories is a satisfactory song. Learning way less into any advertisement and going all into the environment destroying super capitalist company Fissit Inc. This song works perfectly. The chorus, specifically the construct, automate, explore, exploit part sounds really great. The wordplay is off the charts. The instrumental immediately makes you want to start hitting a jig. From the second song produced by Ooh Oxygen, you could tell they wanted to give Stoops their money's worth. And it came out wonderfully. What an evil, banging, and destructive song. Number 18. So this is it. Not only the song that actually blew up Stupendium's channel and is still their most popular video to this day, but also the last song that could be considered old Stupendium. See, I consider what is old to be anything from before 2020. So the 17 songs after this, this is the last pre-2020 song on our entire list. And what an absolute masterpiece to end it on. I walk to school with my best friend. Surprise, surprise, she's late again. She's got a club, she wants me and don't think I've ever raised a pen. Why Did I Say Okie Dokie is another song that could be considered more of an experience than a song. However, unlike Tune Into the Madness, where it is disorienting and breaks many fundamental rules of strong structure, Why Did I Say Okie Dokie instead uses the song's structure and setting to masterfully break it down and destroy everything about it, much like how half the game it is based on Doki Doki Literature Club does. The song basically retells the entirety of the game flawlessly. And also, with me saying that, if you are still not spoiled on Doki Doki and want to play it for yourself, or are sensitive to the topics of depression and self-harm, please skip ahead to the timestamp in the video. You won't miss anything besides a play-by-play -play breakdown of the song. Anyways, you still here? Okay. The instrumental is very in line with the game's soundtrack, not really picking up at except at key parts, and if you know nothing else about the game, this song does sound normal at first. This song perfectly emulates the feeling of the game because it starts normally. There are little to no cues anywhere of anything sinister happening. And then the forced chorus ends. The song reverses with disorienting noises and audio playing until the song starts over, except this time say so Ori is nowhere to be found. Instead, Monica beckons Stoops to join the club, which they do. Upon joining and doing a roll call like they did the first time where it was say Ori's aloof and kooky, Natsuki sweet and cutesy, Yuri is deep and brooding, Monica's brazen beauty, now Sayori's part is heavily distorted with Stoops even asking the penultimate line for the second chorus where she went. Natsuki is now brutish cutesy, and Yuri is too into me, whereas Monica is staying the same, and if you still weren't picking up the clues by now, don't worry, you will be. After the chorus, the song reverses again with Stoops now saying that they're all alone at school with Monica and how Monica is all that you need, with them finally realizing that Monica had killed every other club member in order to be just with them. Then the finale of the song kicks in. This is easily up there as one of my favorite sounding parts in any Stupendium song. Like if we were to break this down verse by verse, this would rank extremely high. The rock guitar and intense overwhelming instrumental blaring over the track as Stoops continues screaming asking why they said okie dokie. And then as they continue screaming the song keeps glitching out until finally the doki doki theme plays and it all ends. This song may seem like a lot, and it is, but not in a bad way. From the little details such as saying in the first verse, swear I won't leave him hanging before Sayori hangs herself, or I'd say we're cutting it fine before Yuri stabs herself to death, to just the little sound effects and harmonies, and for being one of the sung and not rapped at all songs that Stoops has ever done, it is absolutely one of the best and remains their most popular song for a reason. The constant let motif of just, of just the two of us throughout is just another cherry on top. In fact, Stoop said on Shibati's game show Lyrical Miracle that originally they didn't want to make Why Did I Say Okie Doki because Escalator, the instrumental creator, kept bugging them for it. And then eventually they caved. And if Stoops didn't cave, their career maybe would have never have taken off the way it did. So hooray for peer pressure! Number 17. Anyways, now that everyone, whether you skipped my info dump or not, is caught up, let's get on to our next song. <laughs> The Data Stream featuring Cami Cat is another song about an evil businessman. However, this time, the song is much more realistic, which definitely adds to its unsettling, bright and poppy tone. Yes, the song is a bright and happy song, but the subject matter is anything but. 
Based off of Cyberpunk 2077, which yes, is another example of Stu's having a project worked on too far of its release, so the game came out to massive controversy, the song focuses on the company Arsaka, and how they have control over everything, including people. In this future, people are basically robots with detachable limbs and parts and brains, all created by Arsaka. And this song is them gloating in their face how they have full control over everything. Not to mention the constant victim blaming it, well, technically you did consent, and this song doesn't just perfectly emulate Arsaka, but real life companies in this very day and age. From lines such as, the product does not get to make the demand, society currently lists electronics who isn't conducting resistance ironic, and the worst one, the one that ends the song, the terms were presented in full to inspect, you scroll to the end just to get to accept, only to then constantly ask the famous Google pop-up line, Arsaka would like to know your location as the song ends. This is all without even mentioning the part at the end of the third verse, where Stoops lists off a bunch of data that Arsaka collects from people, from serious info such as your family, medical history, ethnicity, facial structure, or tone of your voice, all the way to mundane things such as gender identity, hobby, bone of choice, sexual orientation, and even your fucking favorite fruit. Yeah, and you want to know the worst part about all this? Apparently that entire part was written using date data that Facebook actually sells off and collects. So if you want a song to turn you into a fearing tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist, then this song is the perfect one to listen to. Now, now, before you go, if you could just scroll down through all these terms of agreement, don't worry, they're not important. If you could just go and hit accept, we can get to number 16 now. Number 16. Well, I don't have a better transition than to just say how about we move on from contractual manipulation and data harvesting to emotional manipulation and gaslighting. God, I was wondering where all the Dark Evil songs were throughout this list. So based off of Cult of the Lamb, Wool Over Our Eyes is a song that perfectly describes a cult. At least I believe so, as I've never been in one to my knowledge. But anyways, the song's instrumental is pretty good. Although honestly, compared to many of the other songs around this area of the list, I would say it's weaker than most. Other than that, the vocals and rhyming and flow is incredibly strong. Like I've never even heard of or used Betwixt before. It was shocked it was an actual word. Plus, it was the song that made me a Stupendian fan. Because once I listened to it, I decided to listen mo to more and more songs. And here we are. The song over its runtime goes from being warm and accepting and sweet with the cult being described as a haven come community cue funny and original totally totally hilarious joke here to in the second verse being more sinister such as beginning to take things from cult members being more aggressive and the flow becoming more fast and intense with the third verse being a sacrificial sermon all the while the cult members not only don't question it but as the chorus states they are fully accepting of it and know what they're getting into the worst part of this song is the fact it's that actual cult are like this in real life, which just makes the writing so much stronger. Not to mention the effects throughout, such as making it sound like it's outside of crickets chirping and wind howling. But with multiple characters, such as the tarot card giver, I don't know his name, I never played Cult of the Lamb. Not to mention how the instrumental becomes loud and bombastic and deafening towards the end as they summon the one who waits. And it is no wonder why Wool Over Our Eyes just deserves to rank highly on this list. Number 15. So this is my opinion for the best remaster on this list. Not only the best sounding one, but also the one with the biggest glow up from its original ranking. It's a joy, it's a joy, it's a joy, it's a joy, it's a joy to be among we happy few. Yes, the worst stupendium song is now number 15 on the list. From going completely unlistenable to in the top 15 best, Ooh Oxygen basically re resuscitated this song from its deathbed. The song itself is about We Happy Few. It doesn't have a super deep meaning besides being a look inside a Wellington Well society, but it still does this really well. Some of my favorite lines include stuff like Our town's burning down in a rainbow of hues, even the sky wouldn't dare to be blue. And of course, the entire redacted part at the end, which just adds to the totalitarian nightmare that is Wellington Wells. Not to mention Dan Bull appearing as Uncle Jack in his first ever appearance on the Stupendium channel, and it's a great first time, working well as to trying to get across the point that he exists solely as an advertisement and a threat for joy and for downers respectively. Not to mention the chorus, instrumental, and flow all being inspired by 60s acid rock bands, and this song sticks out in all the best ways. Not only as my opinion for the best Stupendium remaster, but also one, the one that fixes the literal worst Stupendium song. 
And for that, this song truly is a joy. Number 14. And so we fall. All we've ever known is being on TV. And so we fall. Our only home is neon BBC. And so we fall. As you can tell, Stoops has the power to make even the most innocent of songs something with a much deeper message underneath. And nowhere is that more present than in this song, And So We Fall. First of all, I have to say, this is easily one of, if not my favorite, Stupendium instrumentals. It is just absolutely perfect. The loud, blaring trumpet, the bass and guitar, the jazzy orchestral pop mix just works so well, it perfectly fits in with the world of Fall Guys 2. Anyways, Going back to the song's message and lyrics, the song has little to no rapping in it, it is mainly a sung through song. The lyrics are about how the Fall Guys beans are tired of being treated like entertainment abuse puppets and are planning to unionize and revolt, but even if the lyrics are catchy and the instrumental is blaring, I just have to say that the course of the song is easily in my top 5 favorite Stupendium courses of all time. And the fact that we still have 13 songs to go and 14 is already in contention for being one of my favorites of all time, yeah this part of the list is leaving 10 out of 10s entering 11 out of 10s. Number 13. So what do you get when you got Stupendium moving out of their house into a new one, a lot of free time, an old game you never made a song about, and a house you are painting and remodeling? Satisfaction guaranteed, cash in and in no receipts, your dream home is more than free as a bad cup of tea. Room for Improvement takes the house flipper game to its natural conclusion, an unsupervised, unregulated mess. While House Slipper tries to encourage you to make a good house, Stupendium does what any player would and completely makes a horrible mess of it. And who would have guessed, an evil businessman song? Yep, not all businessmen wear a suit and tie and not all evil capitalists want businesses. This time, the businessman is simply a lazy scam artist who will redecorate your house only after being late, drinking all your tea and eating all your biscuits, charging an insanely high amount of money to afford retirement, and of course not knowing a damn thing about how to actually build the house or even what colors exist. You know what? Screw Zodiac signs. Which room for improvement made up colors your favorite? Mine is Blurple, and if any of you say gravy blue, maybe blue, or hot dog embargo, then just deny already. Seriously though, from having a catchy chorus and instrumental, a nice collect to Rogue's Gallery, which we'll get to soon, and some quick and impressive rhymes, all the while being as British as possible, Room for Improvement is another extremely underrated classic. Number 12. Damn Bull and Stupendium have collaborated a lot, as you can tell from the list. But would you be surprised if I said that this is actually the best Damn Bull and Stupendium crossover and we have no more left? Yes, number 12 is the best crossover between the two, and it's an amazing one. Every life has a light in the tunnel ahead, but you might just find that behind it instead of a heaven is an engine and the devil in red. And we're next on the menu with the flipping on the end of the line, just like Don't Let the Bell Hops Bite, is a song that is irreparably connected to its source material, but once again, this is not a bad thing at all. Again, the fact that this is about Choo Choo Charles and has no other meaning isn't a bad thing. In fact, it makes it just as fun, if not more so. The song is in the perspective of two train conductors and also Choo Choo Carl cultists who sacrifice people to him in the vain hope of not being his next meal. The instrumental is perfect for the song, if hard to describe exactly what about it is good. It just is a good instrumental especially for the song. Dan and Stoops swap between verses to constantly rap, and it's just a great time. The chorus is amazing and catchy. Stoops raps really fast at the end, and even makes up a new word, scissory, which means to be scissor-like. There is this really funny innuendo, which, besides a Danbull dropping fuck on We Told You So, is one of the most directly inappropriate things in a Stupendium song to date. And overall, this is just a catchy, fun song. Even if I can't describe it as much as the other songs on the list, this song just works and does everything extremely well for me. Now, Number 11. 151,600 people die every day on earth. And if that's not a reason to cry, well, it's an awful lot of paperwork. Rest Employed may seem like it's a simple, slightly silly song about the game Death and Taxes. It also seems like one of the songs that's irreparably attached to the source. But would you believe me if I said it wasn't? Oh yeah, getting philosophical about issues in our real lifetime. So first of all, the instrumental works perfectly for the song. Instead of being anything super over the top, it's way more simple and minimalist, which works because the entire point of death and taxes is that it's basically the Grim Reaper, but it's an office job. The lyrics, while not the most complex, are still really good, getting off the thought that anyone could truly die, that death is inescapable, and it's simply you waiting in the line for your number to be called forwards. And the main message of the song, the businessization of death in the funeral business. 
having a funeral for people seems to be a necessity upon death. And even if they aren't morgues, cremation facilities, coroners, people who keep track of death records, the funeral planners and businesses, the coffin makers, this seems almost guaranteed to your loved ones upon your death. However, that isn't the case. Everything costs money. Businesses want to try and get your money. They want to take competition away from the other funeral companies. Well, like the bridge says, the light in the tunnel has been privatized. We live in such a money-hungry, hyper-capitalist society that even the concept of death and having a place and time to mourn is turned into nothing more than a price tag. Even if it isn't explicitly stated, this is what I believe. Not to mention that the employee they're talking to throughout the song could be seen as a body they're working on. As soon as you have no purpose anymore, you're inhumed and replaced. We live in a world where robes were behind the tides, so now the scary face of death isn't the ghostly, dark, shadowy Grim Reaper, but is now a monotonous suit and tie corporation where you better pay up, or else your spot tomorrow will just be moved along down the line. Now, I didn't mean this to be so manifesto esque, but that is what I think the song is about. It's a minimalistic, depressing, yet catchy tune. It didn't need to be a show stealer to get its message across, because it's right there in the game's name, in the song's chorus. Nothing certain but death and taxes. Number 10. Now, while I may sound super intelligent and be able to break down the hidden means by stupendium songs, I honestly can't for all of them, and honestly for this one, I have no clue what its meaning is besides for being confusing, disorienting, and mind-melting. Perhaps you should answer the phone. If you can't place the pin where patterns end and you begin, follow the director. Slide Into the Void is a song where I just can't place the pins down on it. Is it about the game and only that? Is it about something else? What am I looking for? And then it hit me. That's the point of the song. Yes, it's irreparably connected to the game with parts of the doctor going crazy and explaining what is happening in verses 2 and 4, but that then it isn't because the character troops plays during verses 1 and 3 is confusing, using oxymorons like they were syllables, such as where the paperwork is worshipped and the rituals are written. Then there's the pre-chorus and chorus by Candy Cat, where it's simply the world breaking down and then the confusing nonsensical word vomit. What about the instrumental? Well, it is dark and brooding and loud, but has so many voices in the background, echoes and beats going on, it just leaves everything confusing. As someone who has never played Control, I have no clue about anything going on besides the game kind of being a version of the SCP Foundation. I don't know. I don't know what the meaning of the song is, but maybe there just is no meaning. Maybe the point of the song is that the point is doled out. Regardless, I think the song sounds amazing. Again, going for a minimalist approach on the flow, but the rhyme schemes are top notch, the characters are well portrayed, and the song is entirely straight faced, no humor to be found anywhere. Which just adds to the oddity, considering that that's what Stupendium is known for. Slide Into the Void is both not a Stupendium song, or being the perfect Stupendium song. It's a perfect song, meaning while not having one. It drags you into the void and doesn't let you go, which is why I think it's the perfect song to start the top 10. Number 9. Anywho, what can I do for you, pal? You look like a fine upstanding island representative, the kind to understand an enterprise when they're presented with. Out of all Stupendium's Animal Crossing songs, I feel like everyone skips Rogue's Gallery. It was the third song released for the trilogy, it has the least amount of views, and I think that, no pun intended, criminal. While well, Nookline and Sinker is the prime example of a Stupendium Evil Businessman song, We Hallowed Wings is a Feel Good Jolly song, and then there's Rogue Gallery. Basing itself off a not very popular Animal Crossing character compared to Blathers and Tom Nook, and not really falling into a category just causes this song to get skipped, it seems. Well, by being number 9, I think you all know what I think of it. The instrumental is snazzy and catchy. The beat sounds like a submarine radar, which makes sense because Crazy Red sells out of his boat. The song goes from sleazy businessman to someone who you probably don't want to cross. If you want, if you enjoy art, you'll enjoy this song. Not just because I'm saying it's an art piece, but because the song is filled with art references. It's just like another Milk Milk Lemonade or A Little Heart, where Stoops tries to fit as many art and artist puns in the song as they could, and it boosts the song so much. This song also mixes extremely impressive flow and rap and character work. Like, Stoops raps uber fast with multiple tongue twisters and yells them all flawlessly within only mere seconds of each other. Verse 2 especially is filled with word overload. Like at times, it sounds like they're speaking utter 
gibberish. The first line of the course is also literally used in Room for Improvement, which makes sense as they're both about scummy business friends. So, on top of the main topic here, Stupendium has Crazy Red. Rapping in an insanely fast New Jersey-esque accent, Stupendium does red perfectly. Stoops goes from an overly friendly sketchy art reseller to someone who is adamant about you buying from him and getting slowly more and more aggressive to in the third verse outright saying he is a criminal at large and also outright threatening you with murder if you defy him or question him too much. Red ties you in with his slight chances of getting something not counterfeit, calling you his cousin and dragging you into his family just to immediately get pushy the more you stick around. Not to mention the cameos from Gladys and Tom Nook in the song, I mean that not only is this the definitive Animal Crossing Stupendium song, but it is one of their best, one of their most underrated, and just an absolute masterpiece. No pun intended. Number 8. So, I didn't want my biases to show too much in this list, but as the song was the one that put Stupendium on the map for me, and being about a game I love to death, I feel like I have to put it this high. <laughs> Either you're closing your eyes to saving you do not wish to acknowledge, or you are not aware of the caliber of discounts indicated by the presence of a heart in your community. Hey kid, look at you, right time, right place. Rise for the big game. Right money in your pocket. You're lucky, very lucky. You're very, very lucky that you get to be investing in this very virtual robot. So, sleazy businessmen. Stoops has played a few, but here's the sleaziest of them all. An internet salesman. Ad Infinitum is a song about Spamton G. Spamton from Deltarune Chapter 2. Being a character whose sanity is far beyond the negative digits, has no sense of coherent grammar, or constantly breaks any rules he may have even have when it comes to it, you may think that having a song that even is anywhere close to accurately portraying him is near impossible or sounds awful. In walks Mick Stewart Pendium. Stupendium somehow impressively manages to portray Spamton nearly completely accurately which is one of the most insane things I think I could say. The overwhelming, unrelenting noise that the song devolves into. The fast, fast, fast lyrical section. Undisputed, the gotta have it part of verse 4 is easily the fastest verse Stupendium has ever rapped and will more than likely ever rap. Almost 200 words in 24 seconds. That is 83.8 words a second! Only 1.6 words a second behind Eminem's Rap God verse. You know, THE Rap God verse? But besides for a word salad of horror proportions and perfectly portraying Spamton, the instrumental is a mashup of the actual Deltrune OST with hyperpop, techno, dubstep, and of course typical hip-hop beats. But this song without a doubt has a message. It's about commercialism and trends. Something that I mean, do we really have to dive too deep into? It's about unrelenting advertising and trying to sell trends and scam tactics just like it. But the actual thing I would like to talk about more is how actual ADHD people and autistic people alike have commented on how this song is the definition of overstimulation. The unrelenting beat, all over the place, fast and slow, pitched high and then pitched low vocals, the constant unrelenting assault on ears for five minutes straight. The song by design of the character it is about is designed to overstimulate and overwhelm. Which, before I move on, I know is hypocritical to praise the song for being overstimulating and then banish way deeper down 2023 remaster to the second worst song. The difference is, one was designed to do that and doesn't ruin a good song. The other is way deeper down to Got it? Good. Number 7. So, Neath was very hard to rank for me. Did I rank it honestly? Did I give it a disadvantage due to being like three songs in one? What was I to do? Then I realized, it's my list. I don't think it being three or four places lower than where it currently is would change anything. Stuck down in the neath, drowning in disease Egg sticks to your teeth, it's thick and viscous With the whispers in the breeze Try to earn an honest pub But a pub is just a rubber And a rubber's just a rubber to a tea Neath is both Stupendium's most unique song and Stupendium's longest song, clocking in at around 12 minutes long. But the 12 minutes are completely worth it. Based off of Mask of the Rose, a game in the Fallen London series, this song features only OC stoops made up who represent different parts of Fallen London. We have Harry Teller, our dead newspaper seller narrator who guides us around. Robert Rackett, or Honest Bob, who represents those who lost everything and who wish for love but can't as they struggle to even keep themselves. 
We have Miss Cassie Haversham, a character who is canonically transgender and has transitioned since falling down in London. They represent the middle class who seek sexual liberation in their new home, unafraid of everything who may look down on them from the surface. Mr. Byron Brimstone, a rich, high-class individual who may not even be human deep down, who is keen to spread conspiracy theories and to be alone to himself, obviously holding some control. And finally, the only character who is actually from the series, Mr. Pages, who controls everything from the shadows. There is a lot to unpack in this song. And if I were to do so now, it would easily double or triple the size of information and get down the longest sections I have written so far. So please, this is still a new song and it is one of Stoop's biggest productions they have ever made. This thing is literally four songs in one and it is a mini musical, so please, go listen to it! It is worth your time! Everything I say here would be not be doing it justice. For a 12 minute song, this song easily reels you into its world and lets you get deep and philosophical with each character. Not to mention the amazing instrumental throughout and backing vocals, which make this feel like a real musical production. Bravo, Stupendium. Bravo. Number 6. So we're at the point in the list now where I feel like I have to start blurbing out achievements along the way. Like for this song, this is the best advertisement song that Stoops has made. Sure, that was never something I ever considered in my rankings, however I guess if you want to bring it up, that means a summary Zumaru was the worst advertisement song. And now number 6 is the best, and one of the first ever instances of Stoops getting the chance to make an advertisement for a game. If all the world's a stage, then I should play my part. You may say it's a shame, but I say that it's a knot. Every dick needs a knave to come and stack the cards. The world may be yours to say, but it's mine to tear them apart. Fiend Like Me is an Evil Genius 2 song, a song about a base building evil supervillain game. This song easily ranks up there in terms of instrumental, like easy top 3 for me. The jazzy tune, how it goes from a typical 60s-esque tune to something more sinister and spy-like while incorporating the over-the-top hip-hop beat, it's perfect. Not to mention multiple tongue twisters and rapid fire verses, along with over-the-top voices and puns that fit for this era of villainy, and this song right off the bat is perfect. But my favorite thing about the song isn't the instrumental, not the wordplay, not the speedy voices, no, it's the chorus. Hands down, the best chorus Stupendium has ever made. Referencing classic Shakespeare, villain Stoops realize that they don't even want to be a villain, but the world needs one and they need to fill the role that is cast. They just seem to be doing a, no pun intended, stupendous job at it. From beaming tic-tac-toe between borders and nations, threatening to make the Swiss plateau just no longer exist, and to rewrite the genetic code of everyone who answers the telephone to vote Stupendium into power worldwide. Does the song have a deeper meaning? No. Is the song irreparably connected to any source material? Not really considering Evil Genius didn't create the evil 1960s villain genre. But does it need to be any of those things? No. Sure, most of the songs here are long, complex masterpieces that tell stories and morals and serve as warnings to our own society, or just are details about our modern society that we never think about. But what I think that this song's meaning is to just let loose, be devious, and have a fun, jazzy, groovy time. Because when listening to this song, that's how I feel. Unless you cheat in a mustache curling competition, in which case there's no saying you get out here now. Number 5. The Top 5. What happens when you take every kick-ass 80s action anthem and make it about a game involving staying overnight at a pizzeria with killer animatronics? You get a pizza of the action. Another song that is irreparably connected to the source material, don't worry, this is the penultimate one. This song is just a giant 1980s music trope fest. The techno and synth being catchy tunes, the rock guitar shredding it for no reason, the vocals being powerful anthems that were made to be chanted along to, the overuse of way too descriptive storytelling and sound effects. This song reeks of 1987, but in all the right ways. This song manages to combine every 80s music trope and Five Nights at Freddy's and mixes it Oh, so well. People don't realize that this song is more accurate to actual FNAF music than any other of the dark and brooding FNAF songs out there. Don't worry, I still love like 75% of them. But by far, one of my favorite things about the song is its medley. This doesn't sound like an 80s parody song, it sounds like it is an 80s song. Which I think is the most impressive thing that a, a genre parody like this could be. It knows what it is aiming for and it hits all the targets perfectly. 
Another great part of the song I like is the thriller ending it does, which not only does Stupendium do a near perfect impression for, but the section just sounds so great and works so well, I just can't put it into words. A Piece of the Action is an amazing song and definitely a song that belongs in conversation for one of the best FNAF songs out there. Number 4. Quick question. What do you get when you get Stupendium, a friend who made a new game, a friend who needs a song for their new game, a bu and a bunch of can-based sexual innuendo? You all know where this is going, right? This is a song about soft drinks and nothing else. Get your mind out of the gutter. Hey guys, are your lips dry? Any desiccated ladies trying to get by? This song from my first listen was immediately one of my favorites. Vending Machine of Love does nothing wrong at all. Everything about this song is perfect, which is just where we are on this list now. Stoop starts this song out with a blatant message that this song is only about soft drinks and nothing else, before we dive into four minutes straight of pure unabashed metaphors for porn, for sex, for sexual freedom, for pride, for unity. This song manages to somehow be more gayer than the song that has Stoops portray a literal trans character, and all it does is mention three sexualities in a bunch of soda cans. This song is through and through is a love song, a song about a message which is to say that it's okay to be attracted to who you like as long as it's consensual, you love who you love, you have no control over it, be proud, screw it from the rooftops, slot your pennies in that vending machine of love, pick out your partner and be ready for the happiest time of your life. No matter your pansexual, gimme romantic, or even arrow ace, love exists out there platonic or not. You don't deserve to be alone. That or this song could be about a secondary meaning. Yeah, this song is about only cans, a pornographic soda can game. So while yes, this song does have very wholesome themes, they're more like undertones. Nope, because the main message of this song is that it exists as an advertisement for porn. Not like it's advertising porn, which I guess it is. You know what I mean. This song is supposed to portray an advertisement for this vending machine of love, which is something for everyone. Get your juices flowing, thirst of a lonely man, and of course slot your pennies in the vending machine of love is just outright calling tactics used on sites like OnlyFans. Now, as someone who is under 18, I do not feel comfortable going into details about this. However, just know I have been around the internet since I was like, six, so just know I'm not completely clueless or an innocent being. Anyways, can't believe I made it this far without mentioning the best part of the song. The third verse, which is nothing but can puns. Off the walls, tongue twisting, nonsensical can puns. And for a short, no pun intended, sweet song that was apparently written in one single night long session. This song rocks as a song with many, many messages. One of pride, one of lewdness, but a message of unity and acceptance. Followed by an incredible chorus, singing, puns, and instrumentals. Vending Machine of Love is easily one of my favorite songs of all time. Which just shows you the competition we have if number four is already one of my favorite songs. So download Only Cans, the app for soda lovers. It's got very high ratings. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, it's, it's very hydrating. My mistake. Number three. So a bit of context first. Originally, this entry was going to be number two. However, after writing that entry, I realized that, hey, I actually like number three more than number two. So I, so I swapped them. So this song was meant to be number two originally, and the song that was once number two was originally meant to be here. Got it? Good. Come take a tour behind the doors where dreams are made. Where boys and girls around the world can come to play. Where you'll see entertainment, innovation on display. The Toy Box was a song I originally dismissed. After I despised the source material Poppy Playtime, I just thought this song was stupid and never gave it a shot, but I'm glad I did. This rock musical horror ballad mixed with some word vomit for good measure is an amazing song. Being the last song on this list that is irreparably attached to the source material, the Toy Box serves its job well. In fact, it outdoes itself. 
from a happy lullaby like flow and chorus, telling a vivid story of want and revenge, to a chorus that honestly is pretty mediocre, to be fully honest. But my favorite part, the bridge during the second verse, my god, that bridge, from the all we know is how to play, 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 play line, all the way to the you can't hide from your friends part. This song works on every level. It is unsettling, it is creepy, it is a fucking jam, it is catchy, it is fast paced, and even if it is over five minutes long, trust me, by the time it feels like one minute, it's been three. This song makes time feels like it moves slower. I feel bad because now looking at everything else around it, I feel like I need to go super in depth about it, but I can't, I can't word it any more than I have. This song is just amazing. Just please listen to it. Number two. So I'm kind of sad because looking at the two songs we have left, this is the last one that is truly a rap song. Sure, number one has elements of it, but pretty much after this song, it's much more sing-songy musical with some hip hop, if anything at all. Plus, this is also our last guest feature on the list, so it better be a great one to score so high. to welcome you to your new home in apartment two with one bedroom and a splendid view just don't forget when the rent is due yes i can already see it now how is no one's home so high up on the list well i have a rebuttal for you all why wouldn't it be a song that's, that's more about george orwell's hit book 1984 than it would be beholder 3 why is this song so high up simple it's evil Sure, we've seen evil corporations in the data stream, evil capitalists in Nook, Line, and Sinker, and even card-carrying villains in Fiend Like Me, but those are all either hypo-fictionalizations of real-world evils for the first two, or simply not real for the latter. But no one's home is evil because this is real. It's an evil we have now. It is an evil we've had before in history. It's about totalitarian governments. From Germany during the 1930s to 40s, to the Soviet Union, Union, to China, to North Korea. We have seen these real world horrors all too often. Appeasement of a single ideological figure, compliance from all citizens, brutal punishments and slash or death to non-compliers, stalking, no privacy or basic human rights, destruction of personal enjoyment such as musical tastes or religion, paranoia that any slight step out of line is enough to end you and your entire family's lives. These aren't made up horrors to tell a story. These are real things real people live with on a day-to-day -day basis. And this song explains it all out to you in broad fucking daylight. From its dark, pounding, slightly orchestral instrumental, to the evil whisperings throughout, to Stupendium being up for how they're corrupt, only to immediately turn around and lie to your face that they're not. From them even being watched, from McGuire singing a haunting and eerie tune for the chorus, from Stoops watching everything you do, knowing everywhere you go, and only being ever so violent about it. No One's Home is an evil, fucked up, disgusting song that I just love so much. The insanely rapped verses, the beautifully and haunting song chorus by McGuire, the vivid storytelling, the sleaziness of Stupendium. This song is if Stupendium decided to combine every single one of their evil businessman songs and jacked up the authoritarianism up through the roof of the political compass. I love this song. It is easily in my top five favorite songs of all time. However, it isn't number one on that list. Or this. But what is <laughs> number one. So remember how I said back at Why Did I Say Okie Dokie that it was the last pre-2020 song to be on the list? Well, I kind of lied a wee bit, but trust me, this song is easily not only the best Stupendium song, but one of, if not my favorite songs of all time. It is one that I feel like is painfully obvious to be the top spot in this list. It feels almost cliche, but I couldn't resist putting it in the top spot that this song deserves. This is the Stupendium's magnum opus. This is the best Stupendium song. Welcome to space What were you expecting? It's a dangerous place 
Thank you for investing. Go Where do I begin with the fine print? First of all, if you want an actual deep dive into the message of this song, besides why I can try an info dump to you, there's a really good song breakdown that Stu promoted a while ago. I'll try to find it and link it, but if I don't, it's because I didn't remember, so whoopsies. First of all, the instrumental. It may start off as a simple piano, but it quickly becomes much more. Being based off the Outer Worlds, the song fills in with bass, other synth-based instruments, and it just sounds hopeful and spacey which is the direct contrast to the song's lyrics. Leading into the chorus, the instrumental becomes much more intense, feels like the sound of working in labor for returning to normal throughout the verses. The sound of hammering away at iron is heard in sync with the beat. The instrumental, while stated before is not my favorite, is definitely up there on the top three best stupendium has ever produced or gotten the rights to use. Speaking about rights, let's get the obvious out of the way. The we work to earn the right to work Now I'm not complaining at all about the song blowing up for I don't know the third time now. I think it's great that something I love is being reached out to a wider audience, even if they only listen to it for the roles. Now actually speaking about the lyrics for a second, my god, I love the writing in this song. Everything is written with purpose, with every meaning, with every little flow has its own story and character, everything has its real life counterpart, everything written about the song is perfect. Lines such as behave as you slave for humanity's interest, on account that you're all on account and will quickly amount to humanity's interest. No I ain't team, but there's con and economy, and of course the ending to the we work to earn the right to work lines, to earn the right to give, ourselves the right to buy, ourselves the right to live, to earn the right to die. If you don't get how this could be applied to the real world, then you must be living in, in song number two, because where in the world is this not the case? We work to earn money, our work earns the company money, they gave us a little enough for us to get by. In order for us to get by, we work. We do this to simply earn the right to live as humans and to just be able to die in peace or not in high amounts of debt for our families. I said that No One Home is every evil businessman song rolled into one. Well, this is like that, except instead of going extremely high up, it went extremely bottom left. This song is the ultimate form of unregulated capitalism. If there weren't regulations, if there weren't rules, if it was only capitalist corruption and government and nothing else, this would be our lives. And if you noticed anything, it already kind of is. Not in the whole, thankfully, but in as close as it could be for the top 1% to achieve. We don't say eat the rich to create no one's home. We say eat the rich to prevent the fine print. Oh, you thought I was done? How silly of you. We still have to talk about other parts of the song, mainly how much of a musical this is. This is probably the thing that kickstarted Stoops into thinking of making me. Not only that, but the fact that this song got popular because people for some reason thought it was a cut Hamilton song. Gotta love Mr. Information on TikTok. So yes, as you can tell, the fine print is my favorite song on the list, and potentially of all time. Is it cliche for it to be up so high? Yes. Do I apologize for it? No. And here, and here, and initial here. Welcome to the family. Stupendium, as you can tell, is one of my favorite musicians of all time. Their music has helped me out through some dark times, and honestly, I'm so proud of Stupendium for not just helping me through this, but for inspiring me to make music myself. I wouldn't be as interested in making music as I am right now if it hadn't been for Stoops and their silly, wacky, evil businessman antics. They master a craft of not having one, and making every song unique, and for having a wacky, out there personality that they don't care who they impress with. They have fun. They enjoy what they do. They enjoy it because people like me enjoy it. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Stupendia. And congrats on soon hitting the 1 million subs. I believe in you reaching it soon. And thank you to all of my current subscribers for getting my channel to over 200. This wasn't intended to be my 200 sub special, but I decided it should be because what better way to celebrate than a big beefy video for you all. The rest of 2023 should be a bunch of videos I have stockpiled up, including my Halloween special, which I will be crunching before going back to doing whatever for the rest of the year. So thank you all so much for watching this video. If you guys liked it, remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and even share the video if you liked it that much. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. <laughs>